my assistant here, Finnegan, right? You gonna help out on this project, buddy? You gonna be my little helper? Yeah. <laughs> This is Gina's 2003 GMC 3500. Nice little short bus, has the big uh, wind uh, handicap door on the back here. And uh, again, uh, she had the bus built last year by a uh, novice in the out on the East Coast. Um, don't wanna necessarily badmouth anybody too much, but it was charged way too much money for a really crappy job. I mean, if it was just a, uh, someone with no skills and no experience whatsoever, I wouldn't have a problem with it, but it was someone charging money for the work that was done, so uh, not cool. But uh, I spent a few uh, days last January um, kind of reworking and rearranging things a little bit, uh, just kind of volunteered to help her make it a little more functional. Hey everybody, Eric Wanderboom here. Uh, just a quick check up here, we're uh, I'm helping out uh, Gina with her uh, short bus uh, re reimagining here. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, the previous builder did a, I'm just gonna say it, a piss poor job. And uh, so we're reworking things kind of quickly and easily and making it a lot more functional for Gina to get this thing uh, livable and uh, uh, back on the road again here. So. Uh, hours or so in <laughs> uh, using again all the existing material that she had um, we've got the main bed platform all finished off here it's gonna be 65 long by 40 wide and then uh, we've got a bench space here that uh, has the same height as the the bed so it'll be like one nice big long cushy bed space really but, uh, now uh, we're gonna go ahead and uh, do a more complete remake of this whole interior and make it look uh, the way she actually wanted it and more functional like it was planned to be in the beginning before tour all right so again the uh, cabinetry was all done with very very basic generic plywood not a good quality ply um, she's done a pretty good job sanding and painting and trying to make it look decent but um, this counter was way up here. It was super tall. It was like 38 inches high, 30, almost 40. It was ridiculous. So it was blocking the windows. And then, oh, jeez. Oh, okay, so another thing. This is quick. one of the things that drives me crazy and why I don't usually do bus builds because I'm six foot two plus, all right? I'm standing right now in the hatch, the escape hatch, and I'm crouching a little bit, okay? <laughs> if I stand fully upright, my head is pushing on the door, okay? So that puts the actual height of the ceiling <laughs> at barely six feet tall. So another reason why I'm not a huge fan of short buses or buses in particular without a roof raise. Do a roof raise if you're taller than six feet tall. All right, but anywho, crouching down to show you. Um, the the bed went like from the end of the cabinets here all the way across the, the end here was completely framed in all the way across this whole entire back with two by sixes, way too many of them. And they were so massive amount of weight, way bigger a bed than she needed. So we kind of did a quick rearranging on things, cut the bed down, uh, just kind of threw everything together to make it a little more functional. And then she's been kind of rearranging and working on things. But one of the things that a lot of people talk about in doing this kind of thing is that you can watch all the videos in the world and watch all the builds and everything. One of the things that we recommend that uh, sometimes that people do, rather than immediately buying a rig and building it all out and have this imaginary thing of, you know, this beautiful space that you imagine or you see from Pinterest, you know, Pinterest pictures or uh, or videos, is to... Do a temporary setup and travel in it for a while and, and see what actually feels good and what works for you. Um, again, this rig has these uh, the, the handicapped door, so um, 
like we did on our shuttle bus, utilize that so that you're maximizing the views for when you're going to be parked and where you're going to be uh, leaving and using your rig. So, um, you know, you can use set up a temporary bed, throw some temporary storage in, units in so that you can for your gear and just live in it for a while and get a feel for the light and for the angles and where things are. And uh, so that that way you will have a little better sense of the space and what you want to do with it. So. All right, so what I always like to do uh, in any project, whether it's starting from scratch or starting a, a redo, um, is I like to get the exact dimensions and measurements. So what I'll do is do a real rough sketch of the, of the, of the bus or of the space and then take measurements and take notes of what's uh, all exactly there, where, where the, that would be the, the, the size of the back uh, doors Here's the, the each of the, the side windows, you know, break it all down so I have a sense of what's what. And then uh, we met to talk about what she wanted and uh, kind of took a couple hours to walk through and look everything over and try to figure out exactly uh, what she wanted and what she what, what to do where. And then I take the, my measurements, my dimensions, and those ideas, and I'll do an actual scale drawing. So then what I do is I, I kind of do another quick little sketch of each of those cabinets, giving a, a little bit of a three-dimensional idea of uh, what it's going to, you know, how it's going to be made. And then I do, to do that, I do a breakdown of materials I'll need for that cabinet. So each cabinet then I have my uh, materials list, break it all down for each one. That's the number two cabinet, 24 again. So each one I'll break down what I need for materials for both plywood as well as drawer glides, you know, uh, hinges, all that good stuff. So I take the time to break all of those down and then I can figure out my material list. We've got a little bit of a unique situation in this one too, again, that right now um, she's living in the bus. <laughs> and so uh, we have to uh, Gonna kind of figure out how to do this i think what we're going to do is we're going to demo off this side she's actually got a tent that she's set up to uh, store a bunch of the gear in the meantime and i have a backup tent as well that we're going to use for tools and for materials and uh that's uh, that's it sitting out there hey look at that there's our shuttle bus and uh so what we're gonna have to do is kind of do a little juggling here to make it work uh so that uh, she can still have a you know safe place to to crash here in the evenings while we're doing the work so uh, one other little different challenge that uh, most people won't have if they're starting from scratch and still living in a sticks and bricks situation so anywho um, again this one's already got a bunch of stuff going we already have a uh, fan installed um, again would have been nice to have the uh, the power buried somewhere but uh, it's run this way and I'm gonna redo these little uh, um, uh, covers around the perimeter um, so I may be able to find a way to stash that underneath in the uh, so it's less obvious and sticking out like that and uh, got a bunch of other odds and ends that uh, were done the metal or some stuff was all torn off up here and uh, so we're gonna figure out how to kind of purdy that up a little bit more and uh, you know make it look both nice not gonna be the most fancy schmancy build but be a whole lot nicer than how it was originally here so a quick demo on the little bench side so the uh previous builder had there was a plan for a toilety drain situation over here so there's a big old hole in the floor and uh, since uh the floor is not the way she wanted it and uh it's already getting chewed up and beat up and ugly and messed up and not insulated we are actually going to leave it in place instead of tearing it all out. We're going to leave it, and since it's already kind of occupying as a, helping out as a bit of insulation, but we're going to add a half inch of insulation, some new subfloor, and a new floor over this floor. So that's the plan for, for this floor. Okay, so yeah, we got the, the cabinets out on that side and the bench and that, uh, everything out on that side we're leaving the bed in just for the moment to give her uh, somewhere to crash at night here because we're doing it while we're working but uh, got this side out we're gonna actually start off with some simple insulation and uh, what I've done is uh, basically I'm gonna leave this metal in that's here no point in trying to tear all that out this thing sticks out an inch from this high point right here uh, to here so we got one inch foam insulation 
And what I'm going to do is put a, a cleat on here and another cleat down here at the bottom. And then we'll infill in between those with the uh, one inch foam. And that way we'll get uh, at least some insulation into these walls and just keep some of that cold from transferring through all that metal. So, so that's the plan for right now. So what I've done is I've just taken a, a fairly straight two by four that I was able to buy and I've ripped it down to one inch rippers. And we've got some uh, self drilling uh, screws, self tappers, and we're gonna attach these to the wall first. And then, like I said, infill in between with the insulation. Ripped one inch pieces of two by, uh, screwed those into our main support steel beat part locations here. Um, basically that put it out flush with the rib that runs all the way along the full, both sides of the bus. Uh, then I put another one a piece of the one inch block at the bottom so that that would be also, uh, and so what, what I have now is a location to actually secure my, my cabinets into um, here and there. Cabinets are going to be a 36, which is actually all the way up to about that screw height, almost to the top of the, or that, that center point between the windows. But uh, this way I'll have a nice uh, solid location to attach the, uh, the cabinetry to and uh, maximize the uh, insulation that we can get in between the walls. We got the subfloor down for three quarters of the uh, space. Again, we're going to leave the bed in place until later. So what I did though, is I got the initial insulation on the walls, got this, uh, some, uh, a half inch of, of polystyrene or poly ISO on the floor underneath this quarter inch underlayment. And, uh, and now basically the cabinetry, same thing over on this side, our cabinets on this side go over 68 inches, which is that mark there. And uh, we're going basically eight feet over on that side, which is a little, short of the door openings on both ends so what i can do is work on my cabinetry now and get these cabinets all built and in place on both sides and then once those are done then i can dismantle the bed and finish out from between the, the cabinetry and the back and the back wall and stuff so this way it leaves her bed accessible well, used and a, uh, another piece of the uh, five millimeter underlayment material as a Sort of the, the wall surface for behind the cabinetry here on both sides. Kind of pretty it up in that way. It'll essentially, when I, when I make the cabinetry, I don't put a full solid back piece on it. I only put slats on. So this way it'll have a, a nice finished air look at the back of the cabinetry without having to have a big full back piece on. On the top of the back of the cabinet, I will have a piece that will go from from here to the top of the back of the cabinet so that it blocks off the light and, and seals them up. But this way it makes it so that uh, a nice finished look on the interior. Mm -hmm. 